We recently got a pretty important upgrade to Nanji. We got a new life raft and if you watched our episodes you'd know that we didn't cross the Indian Ocean last year because we were desperately trying to organize a new life raft. We had three months to organize it in and it was just absolutely impossible to get it to where we were in Indonesia. So fortunately we had to cancel our plans, we'll postpone our plans and um, yeah we finally got that upgrade now. Nanji is 100% ready to cross the Indian Ocean. I don't think there's anything else that we could possibly want for for this passage that's you know coming up yep we're always never going to head to sea without a life raft uh previously we do carry a life raft on board we have an old one that we got with nanji when we first bought her and when we first moved on to her but like many things on nanji back then uh things are broken and we're guessing it's pretty well cactus so it's not something we're willing to trust uh we do always travel when we're out at sea with the tender up on the bow and so we just always kind of had that as like the secondary backup that we'll utilize as a life raft but big, uh, heading out in the Indian Ocean, big ocean, rough seas, you want to be fully equipped and prepared yep. for that. And we think having a proper life raft installed, ready to use yep. at your whim, I think is an essential part of offshore travel. Because we have a brand new one, we're going to use this opportunity to try to inflate the old one. We're going to see if it works and we're going to run through some drills, take you through our safety gear and our safety steps. And uh, like I've never been in a life raft before. I've never seen one inflated, one touched one, nothing like that. So yeah, I've never been in one. We've, we haven't, we've never done a course where like you learn how to inflate them or anything like that. Like we've seen the diagrams and read about them of course but yeah. we've never actually used one ourselves so this is a good opportunity to utilize what we had if it blows up yeah. there's very real chance that it's <laughs> yeah, not going to do anything but everything across it does because that would be awesome yeah. like yeah and so it's a great learning opportunity for you guys and for us as well and i really want to see what they have in their little like solace pack like um, and see if it's up to standard yeah see if like what kind of food to, uh, they had when it was made and yeah everything. <laughs> it, there is quite a high standard that Solus. uh packs that come with life raft solus a packs and solus b packs our new one has a solus b pack but then when if anything was to happen and we're going to deploy it we'll be using a grab bag and that sort of stuff which we will run through yeah but let's go we'll check out the life raft that we have installed first and the, the reasons one. why we put this one here yeah let's do it so meet our newest crew member don't get in dave and through a lot of time and effort, we finally managed to get this life raft delivered here to Langkawi, which we collected right before the COVID-19 scenario really affected the world and closed borders. So we have Don't Getting Dave here on Nanji now, and we've just tied it to the mast because I needed to get some, uh, some little things fabricated, some little cleats or brackets fabricated and of course as everything shut down all businesses closed due, due to the lockdown so we couldn't get anything made and so we just tied it to the mast but since then a couple of months later fast forward to now I have since managed to get these uh, brackets fabricated up so we're going to take don't get in Dave off of the mast I'm going to mount it on the uh, starboard hand railing at the stand here So we mounted the raft on the starboard side here at the back. We only put it on this side because we have all sups and, and port side is just more occupied. We could have put it anywhere there. The, the stand's obviously very, very busy. So this is the most accessible, easy to open to water area that we thought. We named this puppy Don't Get In Dave. Thanks to Dave, our patron, big help that helped us get this to Nanji. So this is the Sea Safe four person life raft. It's a self riding raft. Looks a little something like this. Uh, we decided that it's much easier to have it in a cradle so then it's easy to deploy it. It comes with like a, a quick release here so it's literally just a, a little flick of a latch here and the raft will fall over into the water. The painter is then attached to the cradle here so as the, as the raft will float away 
and then it reaches so far uh, the painter will yank on it and the raft will deploy and then it's safely off to the distance and then we can just jump into it from there whereas our old one is not in a cradle and not mounted like this so it's much harder to get it out and to then use it this is our old life raft, it's the Plastimo Offshore. We've been carrying this around for the last four years. Uh, one of our main concerns about this raft was that when we first bought Nanji, it was in a compartment up the front that was full of water and it was just sitting in the water. It had like a mold line around it, so we didn't know how long it had been sitting in there for. We didn't know if it had affected the life raft and the glue, the compromise, the glue that holds it together. So it also hadn't been serviced for eight years. So we weren't <laughs> we weren't very confident in it, but we've been carrying it around as an emergency backup anyway, just in case, and we could see if it worked. To service a life raft, it costs a few thousand dollars, and we just didn't have that. So we considered our tender as our life raft. If anything happened, we'd be getting in this and then trying to deploy this. That was the plan. A huge problem with this one as well is it needs to be stored downstairs. It, and kept out of the sunlight which means that it's going to be in a locker somewhere and if you actually were in a serious situation and you needed to deploy it this is the problem and your knees but, oh i can i can lift it but it's very heavy and to do that by myself trying to get it out of a locker and then carry it upstairs and it's very hard it's very hard to handle and it's just so much better and safer having one that's just permanently on the back here. Like this is what the bag looks like. This is how it was when we got it. The bag's fallen apart. Life raft is showing, you know? Not ideal. No, this is the death raft. <laughs> So worst case scenario, Nanji's going down, we need to abandon ship, we need to grab everything and get in the life raft. So for us, we have four areas, four steps that we need to go through. We need to get the electronics, we need to get our grab bag, we need to get the food bag, and we need to get water. So let's go through the first step, which is the electronics. This is station number one, we need to get the electronics. So we're gonna grab our EPUB, which has already been set off. We're gonna grab our Iridium, and we're also gonna grab our handheld radio. An EPUB is a GPS marker for your boat. If you let this off, it will send a signal to your government that your vessel is in extreme danger in emergency situations. So you only ever let this off if you are in like a life or death situation and <laughs> you need assistance right now. The Iridium is a satellite network that allows us to communicate with people using our phone or our iPad from anywhere in the world. And this is a waterproof VHF handheld radio, so we're able to contact any other vessels that are in the area. So all of these three things are all around the nav table, so they're all in one sort of area. And then after that, we grab the grab bag, which we keep underneath the companionway stairs. And the grab bag. We'll go through the contents of that upstairs. So this is the grab bag. The important thing about this is that it's lined with foam. So as long as we don't overly fill it with too much weight, this should float. So we should be able to chuck that over the side, bright yellow, be able to see it and grab it. So the contents of a grab bag, everyone's going to differ a little bit, but they generally break up into about five different areas. First one, essential stuff for basic survival. So I've got like fishing line and hooks and lure in here. Wire leader, it's important so I don't get bitten off. I got a dive knife. For the second group, it's like items that you need to help to be seen and help to be rescued. So we have flares, we have a large V map, a whistle, a torch, a sponge, a floating light beacon, a repair kit, and a horn. So the third group is navigation and communication. So before Benita grabbed the VHF radio, and we have backup batteries in there and then we also have our battery bank and a charging cable because we have an iPad so the iPad has the GPS and that's how we actually use our charts on Nanji so this iPad before we go to sea this is a total separate one will be fully charged it's in a waterproof bag and in a waterproof case and so together with that we can pair that with the Iridium which we can then use as a satellite phone as well as well as use our charts and Benita's also put a bit of entertainment in there we have a pack of cards for sanity. Another important thing is that we have a copy of our passports and our boat registration as well. They're just photocopies so that's also in part of that. 
The fourth group is first aid and medicine. Benita and I, we don't actually take any medication, so but if you had medication, you'd definitely have that in here as well. But uh, so for us, we just have some antibiotics, some general painkillers, and a general first aid kit. We have some rubber gloves and stuff for lacerations and those sorts of things. And the last group is food. You'd see in this bag, we don't actually carry much food because we have all the other safety items in there. So we have two grab bags where we don't have it at the moment, but before we go on an open ocean passage, we have an extra bag that's full of cans and a can opener and just general items of food. But in this bag, we do have a few little things like just some muesli bars um, and a few couple of lollies and sweets. Because we have Marley, we have a little bowl for him so we don't waste water. So we can pour water into that and he can drink out of that. And we've got a towel in there as well, just in case his claws are too sharp and we don't want him putting any holes in the boat. And we have a roll of duct tape as well. The third thing we need to grab is our food bag. Now, normally if we're gonna cross a big body of water, we're gonna prepare for this, but right now it's not full. Well, I have got some cans in there. So we carry cans like tuna um, and also beans. So. So our fourth and final step before abandoning Nanji completely and getting into the life raft. So we've got all of that stuff from downstairs. We've got the grab bag, we've got the electronics and we've got the, uh, the food grab bag. So we come up on deck here then and we'll grab one or all of our jerry containers. It all depends how much time we have, if Nanji's still floating, if we need to totally abandon and swim to the raft or if we can climb into the raft would be optimal off of Nanji. But you gotta remember, when you're getting into the life raft, it's not gonna be smooth, flat seas like this. It's going to be pretty horrendous, uh, unless it's a super calm day and you hit a shipping container. But you have to account for worst case scenario, which you think is going to be roughest weather. So you just need to be able to grab this stuff and get into the life raft as quickly and as safe as you can. Right, so we've gone all through the so serious side of things. I guess the biggest thing is that we're ready to abandon Nanji and we've got to get into our life raft. So let's see if it works. <laughs> All right, we're going to take this old life raft to land now. We don't want to chuck it overboard because we don't know if it's going to inflate or not. So it could sink to the bottom of the ocean and we don't want that. So we're going to take it to land and blow it up there and then we can start using it. Hello, is this the uh, Coast Guard Langkawi? Yes. Yes. What can I help you? Uh, I'm the master of a sailing vessel. We're just anchored at Palau in Tan. Uh, in Tan Basar and in Tan Kachil, uh, and we, we plan to do some uh, some drills. We want to let off our life raft, an old life raft. We want to see if it inflates. I just wanted to let you know in case any people report a life raft going off. Uh, Petrol the cell. There you uh, will uh, you are doing a drill uh, somewhere around uh, Blow in Tan Kachil and in Tan Basar. Correct. Okay. Excellent. Thank you Thank for, for contacting uh, my thing. No, no worries. Th thank you very much. Alright. This looks mouldy and gross. I don't know whether I want to get in it if it does inflate. <laughs> Unless that's like the outside coating, because that's like a clear thing. So I think that might just be what it's in. It might be okay, you know. So maybe we'll chuck this in the water and we'll put the painter on land and we'll <laughs> rip it. Okay. I think this must be like an outside casing sort of deal, because it's got like a bow up valve on the side here. And then the plane has got like a little safety string as well. So I don't know, maybe the raft is okay inside. Just, I think, I still think water got in there. It looks moldy. Yeah. Only one way to find out. Only one way to find out. And that's the canister there for the gas, that, or the air that goes in. What's it looks that? like it's not, not rusty, too rusty or anything. But see, that's what we were worried about. Like it just... Yeah, it's all falling apart. Is right. that the actual life raft or the... No, I still think this is the outside. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's get it in the water. Let's just get in the water and pull the string, <laughs> eh? 
god! She floats. Oh my god, I was not expecting that. I honestly was not expecting that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, I guess maybe what we put it on land and yeah, it's kind of on land, so it's not moving. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's working! Oh my! Oh my god! Oh my god! Stay away from it! Just lead it, let it blow up, and then deal with it. Oh my god! <laughs> I honestly can't believe that it just inflated. All the valves were off, so I've had to quickly run in and close them valves, like all these bits, but it actually inflated. <laughs> this is a four person life raft. Look how little this is. Look at the bottom, like you, oh man. Would you rather be on a sinking Nanji or in like this little thing when the seas are huge? You can see that it's been sitting around in crap. Like this shade bit's not really in its right spot, but oh, I don't know. Works. I think they're the things you put over the side, like to stop it from um, to for stability, isn't it? Yeah, they got weights in them. Oh, okay. It's good that they drifted off. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they stayed in. <laughs> So the life raft has these bags here. This must be like the survival bags. And I'm really intrigued to see what's in here. We don't even know how old this life raft is because the information that's like written about it on the side of it had completely disappeared. So I don't know what year. It's like, got little cables and stuff on the side there. It's like the, it's the bot base isn't it completely waterproof. Okay, so. I think we need to pull this out and put it on the beach. We have a date here uh, in the survival kit. There is the last date of servicing for this was the 30th of the 5th, 2001. So the last, it's been 19 years, or almost 20 years since it's been serviced. And we still, so the life raft is obviously older than that. So I'm really glad that we just got a new one. Okay, so in the survival pack, we have a torch, like a first aid kit some paddles and oars. We have three little packets of water, um, a reflection mirror to get attention, a whistle, a light bulb, some batteries. I'm guessing that's for the torch. Then you've, you've got some food. And I think these are can openers. I'm not 100% sure. And sunscreen, a repair kit, and some plastic as well. A little bit surprising is that there's actually some pills here. These are seasickness tablets. Honestly, if this is all that you have in a life raft, you're gonna wanna grab your food bag and your water because this is not gonna last you very long. What's in the other survival bag there? Yeah, we've got another bag here as well. In the second bag, we have a pump. We have also these um, Seven Oceans emergency ration food. So this is, I guess, the food that's gonna Last year, it's a bit better than what was over there. We have uh, another packet of water and then also a whole bunch of flares as well. So I'm really, yeah, if you get in a life raft, you want to grab your water, that's for sure. I'm assuming this was some, like a baler as well, um, that it's just been completely broken. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss the next episode. We have been in the ship in heavy seas and experienced what it's like being stuck at sea in a 19-year-old life raft. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.